Hi, all. Uh, today, I wanted to go over a couple of the new additions that I made to our de novo assembly pipeline and point out a couple of things you can use to investigate possible contamination in your sequencing data. So right here, we're in the edit workflow screen of our de novo analysis pipeline. We see our forward and reverse read inputs going through Trimmatic, which is doing our QC and trimming and quality control. And then here we see the new step that I added. This is uh, tagged identify species and assess contamination, and it uses a tool known as Kraken2. Now Kraken2 is a species or taxonomic classifier that is usually run in a lot of metagenomic analysis on raw sequencing data, or you can use it on assemblies. But basically what it does is it goes read by read and tries to match that read to some kind of taxonomic level. And so you can imagine that in most cases, because we're only dealing with short, either 150 to 300 base pair reads, it is only able to, let's say, identify the genus or the species. In some cases, uh, it could be the family. And as we get more specific, then we can identify some reads that may be from strains that are within the database. So again, this can be used in metagenomic data analysis where you're sequencing a sample and not an isolate and you're looking for the distribution or abundances of species within that, that sample. And this is done, again, a lot with uh, microbial genomics. In this case, we're using it to kind of either, uh, number one, identify the species that we're working with. Hopefully, you should know what you sequenced, but this can be used uh, to double check that. And secondly, to automate, um, or, or uh, set, secondly, to uh, identify whether there's any kind of contamination. And we would see that if you had multiple species that were identified in the, the taxonomic identification. And we'll look at an example like that in a subsequent video. So after running through Kraken 2, it identifies all these species. I'll show what the output looks like. It makes this nice figure using a, a pie chart that shows the distribution of those um, uh, read identifications. And then also one of the additional things I added was this tool called MultiQC. And MultiQC takes the output from multiple runs of FastQC, which is our quality control assessor from our raw reads, and combines them so that you can compare multiple samples together. And this is another way that you can use to identify contamination. If you run it on a, a data set, let's say of uh, Salmonella enterica, and you see something that looks uh, like it may be a, a signature of contamination, which again, I'll show you an example of that, uh, that can be used to, to identify that. So let's go over here and, and take a quick look at what the output from Kraken looks like. So you can see here, I've, I've run this new updated workflow. We see our FASTQ input reads are trimmed and quality controlled reads, and then that's Kraken 2 step. And there are two output files, one that says report and then the classification. So the classification is just the raw data. And we see here that this is per read identification and identity. So these are 100% identity to a species level with a taxonomic ID that is uh, associated with NCBI. And it's good to see that Streptococcus pneumonia is identified here because that is the isolate that I'm, we're working with in this example. So I can be assured that I'm dealing with the species that I think I'm dealing with. If we look at the report tab, this uh, is formatted a, a little differently. This takes all of that raw data and then compiles it where we can see percentages of reads that are assigned to those different levels, whether that be uh, family or genus or species level. So we have here lactobacilli, streptococciaceae, and then the genus streptococcus, and now we see streptococcus pneumoniae. So this is great. This is what you should expect for an isolate that you're identifying. It has all the correct uh, families, genus, and species level information. It even has a number of reads that were assigned to specific uh, specific strains that are available in the in the database. Uh, last, we can see uh, what this looks like for um in the in the report so let's see right here here's the pie chart if we look at the corona pie chart on this data we can click this and it should be an html finder uh, file that will then produce a pie chart that you can either download 
or analyze in more detail and kind of click and, and investigate further. But we see here where most of our reads here are uh, assigned to Streptococcus. So this is just a quick way of being able to assess it. And we'll take a look again at what this looks like when there's some aberrations in our data. Uh, again, this is something that you can download uh, to your computer and view in a web browser. Last, we're gonna take a look at uh, multi-QC, the output right here, and you should click the one that says web page. We click the view data button, and we'll see the combined output from the forward and reverse reads. And this is what the format looks like. So forward is underscore one, underscore two is the reverse. If we go down, we can see the quality by base pair and uh, compare these two. So again, these are per, per sample, forward and reverse. Look at quality scores. And then uh, an important part of this is the percent GC of the forward and reverse read. And this is another great way of assessing possible contamination in your database. It all, the GC contact is very species specific. And if you had different species in this data set, then you would see this on this GC distribution. And again, we're gonna see an example of that in the next video. Now, it's hard to discern whether you have multiple strains of the same species, mostly because they would be very closely related. Let's say you had, you were dealing with Staph aureus and you had an MRSA strain and an MSSA strain, it would be harder to differentiate on the GC content because it's not expected to vary significantly between individual members within that species. So this is just a large overview to see if you have any contamination in your uh, genomic DNA with a possible another species that was present. So you can imagine picking colonies from a plate, you accidentally grab two things that are right next to each other, or uh, you grab something you didn't think you were grabbing. Uh, so that is a, a good way to assess it right here. And again, if you did this across a, a number of different samples, for example, you wanted to look at 30 different salmonella isolates, then you could do this multi-QC on 30 isolates, and you would have this overlay for all of them. And if something wasn't Salmonella enterica, for example, or was contaminated, you would see a deviation from this distribution right here, this 40% GC. If you had something that was uh, a different Enterobacteriaceae or something that was uh, uh, Staphylococci, then you would see different peaks here. And again, we'll see that in a little bit. So these are some nice additions to it. Uh, feel free to play with it. Take a look at this, uh, this new updated report, uh, as well as the, that pie chart. Feel free to download that and then uh, delve deep by clicking in on some of these and seeing uh, which uh, strain and species level IDs are in your data set.